Hey you Vision fans, Colleen will represent Austria in Eurovision 2024 with her song We Will Rave. I'm going to listen and react to the music video and give you my analysis of the song and the lyrics. Then we'll talk about Austria's place in the contest by looking at their 10 year record and their qualification record. And finally we'll talk about how could this do in Mama, can it qualify from the semi-finals and what could it do in the Eurovision final. So uh, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So Austria are continuing their system of internally selecting their artists. This year it is Colleen. Her real name is Marie-Sophie Kreisel, who will be representing them. I believe that she is the partner of Marvin Dietman, who's one of the most notorious Eurovision stagers in the contest. I think he did five or six country staging last year. Colleen is actually no stranger to Eurovision. She has been a stand-in singer for many rehearsals. I think she was the stand-in singer for Fuego and many, many more. But she was a creative director for Spain and Bulgaria in the 2021 Junior Eurovision Song Contest. She was a creative director for Spain in 22 with Chanel, obviously with some help, but she was part of that. And then last year she was involved in the staging for Austria, which I wasn't super mad on. Armenia, which I thought looked great. Germany, which I also thought looked great. And Georgia, which I wasn't happy with. So kind of a 50-50 record last year with her staging. She did say that she was on stage for Georgia's performance last year. She must have been in the back or behind something doing backing vocals. So this is an insider. She's involved in the choreography, in the stage production, in the singing. She's a little bit of a triple, not triple threat, she's like everything threat. 15 different threats. So yeah, she's very involved in the contest. Caesar Samson from 2018 had a similar story. He was also involved being a backup sing. This is not like a big new thing for Austria to pick someone that they've worked with and they know their personality, they know they can work with them, they know they'll be able to do A, B, C, D. And she's been on the Eurovision stage before. So she's 29 years old. She's from Wells in Austria. And when she was seven, she won the Austrian Ballet Championship. So she's used to winning important titles. Is she coming for that Eurovision title? Okay, the song is called We Will Rave and this leaked a long time ago. I would say like five, six weeks ago on Twitter. So I've managed to avoid it up until now. But yeah, a little bit worrisome that this is the second year in a row that there has been an Austrian leak. Okay, I'm going to watch the official music video. I'm definitely going to get copyrighted for audio and maybe visual. If you want to see the original, I'll put it up on my Patreon. This is Colleen singing We Will Rave. Want to know my secret bang? Okay, I'm actually pretty excited about this. <laughs> I've been waiting six weeks to hear it. Oh, she's got some sweaty dudes. Walking through the water. Oh, that's a lovely beginning. Yes, it does sound as old school, doesn't it? It's a lovely beginning though. Oh, <laughs> it's such a girly bop. Lots of naked dudes as well. She knows her audience. And you can see she's a great dancer as well. This is real classic Eurovision girly bop of my dreams. Yeah. Lyrically, I don't think much is going on. Wow. Styling is really cool. Oh, banging a hammer for no particular reason. Why not? Are we going to rave now? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like pop rave. It's real 90s pop glory. Yeah, this is like guilty pleasure, but it's self-aware. And she's got so many naked dudes and they're coming with her to Eurovision. You can see her fingerprint now on slow-mo and some of those other performances. She looks absolutely amazing. Super, super fit. Yeah, she's definitely mothering. <laughs> Let's just get that. Uh, said the song is really switch your brain off bubblegum happiness and we're gonna rave again yeah it's really nostalgic it's like naughty's 90s steps wish they wrote this song oh a little bit of breakdown she's gonna mix it up is it it I'm really excited to see the choreography because it's going to be amazing. Oh, okay. This is actually kind of a cool mix up. A little bit of unexpected there. I wouldn't mind if she did some spoken word now. And we're getting visual concepts for the staging. Very cool, icy. And she's doing some clapping as well, so. Yeah, amazing energy. 
It's really, 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 really fun. It's nice to have something that's just like really carefree, switch your brain off, forget your troubles, pure escapism for three months. That is fun, upbeat, crazy, chaos. And there's gonna be choreography, and I love that there's the naked guys, which really reminds me of like 90s, noughties music videos when there was a lot of skin. Music videos were much more of a big event then. She sounded great in the vocals, no problems there. The song is like really bubblegum, kind of trashy, but like good quality trash like expensive trash, <laughs> like a rich person rubbish dump. You can dance, you can bop. I don't know if I was really getting rave vibes. It sounded like pop rave to me, but that doesn't matter, that's splitting hairs. Lo I love these songs in Eurovision and I really do think they have a place. We don't want the whole thing to be full of them, but we also don't want to have too few of them. And I think we've got a really good mix this year. I really do feel like she's kind of dominating the girly bop section this year. I still have to listen to Cyprus, but I have seen the Eurovision scoreboard, so I'm, I'm aware that this is currently winning that mini battle between those two. And I think that she's got a little bit more maturity and a little bit more experience. Colleen is 29 and she's been to Eurovision like five times before. So that's obviously gonna give her a big advantage. She knows all the limitations of the staging and what she can and can't do, the lighting, the camera cuts. She's got that insider knowledge, so that music video, the kind of coolness, the goofiness, the nods to previous eras, I think she's gonna bring that and she's gonna know how to transfer the music video onto the stage. Nobody's gonna listen to We Will Rave and have an epiphany and move to the moon. <laughs> it's just like, it is intentionally meant to be escapism from your problems and your stress, as opposed to some songs which kind of make you engage your emotions and make you think about what's going on in your life. This is like, no, no, <laughs> don't think about what's happening in your life. We're gonna rave for three minutes and you're gonna totally forget who you are. I also think it's really fun to have this entry from Austria because I kind of associate these more like very sexual, strong women, girly bop songs coming from like we have from Spain, we've had it from Cyprus, we had a lot of these from Greece and Armenia. So I kind of associate them more with like Southern Europe and Eastern Europe. So it's nice to get one from someone in Central Europe, which we kind of haven't had. I'm trying to think what like Central European strong, powerful women girly bops have we had. I'm sure we've had some, but there's just none that really come to mind. Like I can't think of anyone in the same way. Who do I think of? I think of Eleni Fuera. Chanel, Calamira, Elena, Elena Paparito, who was Swedish, but she was representing Greece. So yeah, I really love the unexpectedness of Austria breaking the mold of kind of what I would maybe expect from them. And this, the last couple of years, they've been so outrageous and daring, you know, sending Halo, which was so risky and it didn't pay off because they didn't choose the right singer, but then choosing Tay and Selena last year, which was fantastic. And then this year going for clean, just these are risky choices and they're a little bit kind of like F you. We don't care if this sounds dated or cool or weird or not. We're gonna send it. Think Austria are becoming really awesome in Eurovision. Let's have a look at the lyrics and see, is this gonna make me quit my job? We will rave. Ice running through my veins, you just did it again. Go, because I can't be a friend, I'm cold, but this is not the end. So getting a couple of ice things, and that's interesting now because I didn't hear those lyrics when I said this song, or I just wasn't concentrating on them. But it's interesting that I picked out, I think I mentioned ice when I was doing that reaction at the end. So I was getting some ice vibes in those kind of, they look like ice cube, big ice cubes. So maybe they're gonna be going for an ice theme which would be really, really cool. I'm trying to think who's done ice theme recently. I don't think people do it very often because it's May when the contest happens. Austria ice, her coming out in like a woolly hat or something and then taking it off and being epic. Um, I'm into that. <laughs> so I go, go, go. Where then broken hearted go? No one knows a thing about my heart and soul. I go, when I dance it off alone, I won't let it show, they will never know. Look, not mind blowing lyrics, but she's basically like, F it, I wanna go dance, which is a pretty common feeling. I think a lot of people get to Friday and they're like, screw all that crap, I wanna go dance and get drunk or take whatever pleasure they take. When the darkness hits and we can't be saved, we ram de dam dam dam. Of course you do that. We, we will rave, when our hearts are burning, we feel no pain. And then there's lots of ram de dam dam dams. Second verse, see only silhouettes, I just wanna forget about everything we said and the demons in my head. Okay, so it's like forget your troubles theme. And then there's just lots of we will raves and lots of we ram dam dam. Look, <laughs> lyrically that's fine. I, I'm not looking for deep lyrics here, so I'm not gonna criticize it. But I do like that introduction of the ice theme. I think that maybe that's something they could go on for on the stage. Let's talk about the staging now. I think this is gonna be like a concert extravaganza in the same way I felt slow-mo felt like 
the big act in a Beyonce concert or something like that. Really well put together, top class choreography, top class visuals, really fun and upbeat and exciting. She does a lot of fitness work, so I'm guessing that she's gonna have a lot of agility and mobility on the stage. She's gonna be able to move up and down and all around, and it looks like she's gonna be able to carry that vocal while doing complex choreography. I think the fact that she was the stand-in for Fuego was she the stand-in for Chanel as well? I think she was for slow-mo. That shows that she's able to sing while doing that complex choreography, which is really cool because now I'm excited for the stage show that it's gonna be so ambitious. I think the choreography is super underutilized at Eurovision. So many different types of dance in the world and we tend to get very basic, simple pop. And then we get contemporary sometimes if it's a ballad or a slow song. And slow-mo really rocked the boat by bringing really high level choreography, very complex. So I'm hoping that Colleen will do the same. She's got the ability to do that while still singing, which is an incredible talent, by the way, which I think that juries should respect. Someone able to hit all of those moves, moving around, being thrown in the air, spun around, and still singing cleanly the whole time. That is outrageously difficult and takes a lot of cardio, going to the gym at all. Try it yourself. Try spinning, running around the house while singing a song and having not having your vocal falter at all. I think maybe she might bring five naked dudes she knows her audience. I think that's going to go down well with the Eurovision or with the Eurovision crowd. And it kind of gives it that 90s nostalgia feel. Uh, lighting wise and color wise, I think, yeah, maybe if we go for that ice, we're going to be going for like light blues, silvers and blacks. That could look really cool. I presume that Marvin Dietman, her partner, is going to be doing her staging. And I think he's pretty good at these type of songs. He did Albina TikTok, which I thought looked really cool. It looked a little bit generic because I had all those blues and pinks that we got so many of in 2021. So yeah, I just said they come up with an interesting color palette, make it look very unique, not like any of the previous girly bops we've had, particularly 2021 where we had so many female bop songs. I think there were like eight or nine that year. I presume they're working as a team with this to come up with a really cool color palette concept, just make it stand out. I liked like the leather uh, jacket and the glasses. It was a bit matrix, but still it's a good starting point. And then maybe go leather with ice. That's a good mix. Bring in a little bit of that ballet. If she wants to go in the breakdown to just do like a little bit, not like pure ballet. Contemporary dancing, for example, is kind of like pop version of ballet. So do some contemporary dancing maybe in the breakdown just to show off her skills, that Austrian seven-year-old ballet title. We're not forgetting about that. Yeah, she's just very talented. And when you have someone who's got so many talents like this, you have lots of options for your staging. You aren't limited as much. So she can do a lot. The song is high energy. So we want this big energy on the stage and we want this happiness joy escape of this. So who are Austria in the contest? Well, I've spoken a little bit of, about them already, but let's look at their 10 year record. They are currently ranked 26th out of all the 44 countries who have competed in the last 10 years. Austria have a weird identity because they feel like they can go super, super safe, like they did with Caesar Samson in 2018, where they won the jury and ended up coming third. Again, Caesar Samson was someone who had been working as a backup singer for Pali Genova. He was a backup singer as well with Christian Kostov. So I like the strategy Austria use are kind of using people within the scene. Now, I think some people are gonna complain saying that it's nepotism and that, you know, how can an outside artist break in? but maybe the Austrian delegation have just seen that this is what works best for them. And it's not like they're doing it every single year. Like Halo in 2021, that wasn't someone who was previously within the Austrian Eurovision bubble. Uh, 2019, Limits, Panda Limits. Yeah, I'm not sure what her background was. Some safe, some very safe songs there with Caesar and Panda, but then also going really dangerous in 2014 with internally selecting Conchina Verse, which won. You know, 2016, Luan de Cie, another kind of more safe entry. I like, and then last year we had Taya and Selena, which was absolutely fantastic entry. So yeah, you never know what you're gonna get from Austria. All over the place, you can get anything from a really safe ballad to just crazy wackiness. I, I just like that they're willing to take a risk in the way I think some people, if they got Taylor and Selena's song, would just not accept it. And they wouldn't have accepted Halo, and they wouldn't have accepted We Will Rave. Some countries are just closed. They have a certain sound or feel or tone that they want to stick to. And I feel like Austria is a little bit more flexible. And that's what makes them unpredictable and a little bit of a wild card and very enjoyable. It's not all clear sailing. Look at that period between 2019 and 2022. Three non-qualifications in a row, 40th, 30th, 36. If you look at these results, they're their top 16 or they're like literally last in the whole contest. It's all or nothing with Austria. I'm glad that we're in a good year this year for Austria. And Austria have been in the contest since 1957. So since the second edition, they're one of the oldest countries who've been in it and they've only won twice in 66 and in 2014. I don't, I don't know if Colleen's going to win, but 
<laughs> I still think this is a very fun entry. Okay, so let's talk about how is this gonna do in Eurovision. So first of all, let's talk about qualification. So Austria are in the second semi-final, they're in the first half. I wonder, could this potentially open the show? Depends how sexual it is, I think. If it's like very, very sexual, I think maybe the producers might wanna put it a little bit later. They are kind of conscious that the start of the show, there are a few more kids watching. Um, who else could open the show right now? Denmark could, it's upbeat, it's in English, it's, it's kid-friendly. Malta could also open. So yeah, I don't think that they'll put Colleen in because I think that she's gonna be a little bit of a draw. Yeah, I think she might be coming with something that's a little bit risque, so they might put her a little bit later. I definitely think this is gonna qualify. I think it's gonna be very entertaining. We've got someone who's so experienced and knows what works at Eurovision and has worked with some pretty big entries. So I think it's just gonna be a very extravagant show. It's gonna be very entertaining, I think is the key word. And people are gonna vote for an entertaining song. Also, good news is that because she's in the first half, I think she's a little bit less likely to open the final if she gets drawn in the first half of the final because last year, Austria were second last in the semi-finals. And I think because they got such a good running order slot, that was one of the reasons why producers felt okay to put them first in the final last year. Maybe getting a little bit of protection for being in the first half. When it gets to the final, how will this do? Well, let's see, talk about first about the juries. I think juries do respect these kind of songs when they look super professional. If the choreography looks great, if the visuals look very crisp and clean, the singing is good, there's a jury note at the end. Juries actually aren't that harsh on these songs. I don't really think they can win the jury though. So I think if she does everything really, really well, this can be top 10 in the jury, definitely. I don't think it's gonna get into the top five. I think there's other more jury baity songs which are gonna push her out. If she wants to get up into the top five, she needs to be giving Chanel levels of, oh my God, what just happened? Like Chanel blew people's minds in order to get into the top five in the jury. And I think the televote's a lot easier. Really the televote, you just need to entertain. I think that this show is going to be entertaining. I thought the music video was very fun. I think the na I think people are going to like the naked dudes because they're going to stand their references and some people just like seeing naked dudes and especially seeing her as a powerful woman kind of owning them, her having a power over them. It's got a bit of a girl power feel. So I think that's really cool as well. And that'll hark back to kind of like Spice Girl years and TLC and Destiny's Child is kind of being in control of these men. One interesting thing about the semi-final is that this first half has a lot of female artists. We have Bessa, Colleen, Aiko, Saba, Marina Sadi, Sarah Benici, and then we have a non-binary artist in Nemo. We don't know what Armenia are sending, but, but Armenia are in a streak of choosing a female artist for the last four years in a row. Now that's not to say that they definitely have to choose a female artist, but they definitely it does seem like they are gravitating towards that. Yeah, we could have an all-female first half and Nemo. <laughs> How does Nemo find themselves amongst all of these amazing women? That could actually be really fun. I'd actually love that theme of like, this is <laughs> girl power and then Nemo is like supporting from the side. Yeah, my, my point with all that is that, yeah, just need to stand out a little bit, just need to, styling needs to be a little bit unique and different. You kind of just maybe need to have your side eye at the pre-parties, what are people wearing? Are you going for the same styling in the field? Do you have the same color palette? You just want to differentiate yourself. You don't want to wash out another contestant. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. Just picking a package that makes you unique and stand out is really important, particularly when in the first half and you've got 10 to 15% less chance of qualifying. As I said, Austria had that three non-qualification streak, but they broke it last year with Tay and Selena. And again, I think that all their non-qualifications are justified. I think it's when they send something that's kind of a bit boring, a bit dull, they don't make it. When they send something that's exciting, they do. Halo was the one exception to that. I think it was just sung badly. I think it's as simple as that. I think the actual package was qualifiable. Keep in mind that there were juries in the semifinals at that point, so penalizing vocals. So how do I think this is gonna do? I would say this will probably sneak into the left side of the scoreboard. At this point in time, I'm kind of guessing like 11th, 12th, if the show is really spectacular. 11th, 12th. If the show is like really spectacular, I think this can get into the top 10 definitely. On the same level, if this really, <laughs> has a flop stage show, it's gonna be obviously much, much lower. There's so many components to this which are known entities, Marvin, her, they have this experience. It would just be weird if it flopped. Why would they suddenly flop when they're dealing with their own project, when they've got so much experience? It wouldn't make sense to me. With that in mind, let's check the odds. I think this is 13th in the odds. It is, oh, it's just moved up to 11th. February 13th, it made a big jump from 25th up to 16th, and now it's slowly been creeping up and it's up to 11th. Do I think this can win? No, I don't think this can win. 
it's just it's a bit too familiar it doesn't have enough new components to it it does feel like it's making a lot of references which i love but i do feel like recent winners have brought something new different x factor this just feels like things that have been done before being redone remixed in a very professional cool looking way I'm not getting winner vibes from this at all. I can't see this beating some of the big Talibo people. I can't see this beating some of the big jury people. And you have to do one of them if you're going to win. Uh, yeah, I just can't see this winning with current information. That can change. Very happy if they absolutely kill it. I have no problem with this winning. What does the community think? Well, as I told you, I am on Twitter and people have been obsessing about it this in a kind of guilty pleasure way most people are talking about like i love it but i know that it's kind of a little bit goofy trashy so there's a self-awareness here but they still love it like love is love this is currently sixth in the eurovision scoreboard uh, it's quite close behind belgium in fifth and also it just has switzerland right behind it a great mix of countries in the top 10 this year some names that we don't normally see austria in the top 10 croatia we very rarely see them in the eurovision scoreboard top 10 Lithuania sometimes, Switzerland, yeah. I love seeing all these new people improving. I really like this entry, I think it's really fun. I'm definitely gonna download it. Okay, what did you think about Colleen singing We Will Rave? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on Buy Me Coffee, PayPal, and with super thanks. I'm a full-time content creator, so if you wanna support the channel, I'll leave links to you in the description down below. And of course, thank you to my patrons all over the world for patronizing my channel. On my Patreon, you can get the original audio and visuals when I get copyrighted. You can be part of our My Your Vision Scoreboard group you can get some early updates and some early you can get some early releases and some updates on upcoming videos so go check that out if you're a fan but of course thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video and thanks so much for watching i've seen another eurovision analysis video very soon goodbye blah, 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 blah.